Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless you're telling me that as a parent i don't i'm not smart enough to decide if my child and i need to have gender affirming our okay. doctors are not involved the, what is going you know, so i can't my i can't decide what my kid reads i can't decide yep. for my child what my child says is going on yep you're telling me your beliefs your and they keep saying it and i keep saying what bible are you reading yeah because god was really clear very clear matthew 24 11. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. False prophet is the Greek word pseudo-prophetes, which means a pretended foreteller or religious imposter. A false prophet is a person who spreads false teachings or messages while claiming to speak the word of God. Rather than speak the word of the Lord, false prophets deliver messages that originate in their own hearts as we read in Jeremiah 23:16. Thus says the Lord of hosts, do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you. They make you worthless. They speak a vision of their own heart, not from the mouth of the Lord. Whoopi Goldberg is a wolf in sheep's clothing, as we read in Matthew 7, 15-20. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. God is very clear on transgenderism. Deuteronomy 22.5 A woman shall not wear anything that pertains to a man, nor shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all who do so are an abomination to the Lord your God. Being transgender, is at odds with science and God's design, as we read in Genesis 1, and 27. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. Somehow, in some mysterious and wonderful way, the human male and female, in both body and spirit, are the image and likeness of God. Satan hates mankind because we are created in God's image. He is sowing confusion in the minds of our children, and he is busy in these last days devouring those who are not steadfast in the faith, as we read in 1 Peter 5, 8-11. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Exclusively obtained by Arizona's family shows Democrat lawmaker Representative Stephanie Saul Hamilton discreetly swiped two Bibles in a matter of a minute. Republican pro temp speaker Travis Grantham says this is sinister. When I was watching that, I'm thinking like, well, this is obviously somebody who's got some purpose and some intent and they know they're doing something bad. What's even more strange is the revelation by the house's security team. The holy books discovered buried in the member's lounge furniture and another one in the community refrigerator. For an ordained minister to do that, it just, it's just, it's again, it's nonsensical. I have no clarity, I have no why. Second Corinthians 11, 13 through 15 warns us, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ, and no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. 
After several requests for comments and a phone call cut way too short, we decided to confront the church leader. Hey, Stephanie, uh, not very nice to hang up on me. Just a simple question. Oh, I don't you... want to talk it's, it's just a simple question. Why would you hide the Bible? Who just says anything it's... about hiding Bibles in you're, my you're, you're cut on video. You're cut on video. It's a very simple question, Stephanie. Stephanie, you're an ordained minister. Why would you... Why would you hide the Bible, Stephanie? The Democrat lawmaker then texted the following explanation. Quote, just a little playful commentary on the separation of church and state. I am a Presbyterian minister, so I obviously don't have a problem with the Bible. End quote. A statement that didn't inspire faith to grant them. And that explanation makes no sense to you? No, not at all. The, the state motto is God enriches. I, I don't quite understand the separation between church and state issue there with having a Bible available for members to read. Mark 8, 34 through 38. When he had called the people to himself, with his disciples also, he said to them, Whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him the Son of Man also will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Can you imagine this, though? What, what's the point of stealing Bibles? No, and this woman apparently is an ordained Presbyterian minister. minister so you caught that too, Kim. Yeah. But how does that make sense? I mean, at first I thought maybe it's in the refrigerator because she's trying to spread the word for the next one who opens <laughs> the, the refrigerator. Word cool. But then, for the next like generation. under the cushion. But what is it that that they so hate this individual? It would seem about the Bible because it's a message of love, compassion, the most read book in the world, love your neighbor as yourself. I mean, it's objectively a message that would make us all better. So I don't understand the animosity if that's what was animating this. Here's the thing. It goes a little bit deeper than that. Uh, Sam Smith, uh, unholy, um, uh, Marilyn Manson, eating the Bible. Mm. Why is it always the Bible, you guys? Right. What is it that's so threatening that people have to be shoving it under, putting it's it power? In? To me, it's the, the enemy. The enemy is emboldened with the woke left's perpetuation of an anti-Judeo-Christian narrative. Mm -hmm. Clearly, it doesn't matter that she's a minister. It doesn't matter. The audacity with which she thought she could get away with it and do that, that is a prime example of the persecution that is happening in this country. That's what it is. Yes. The enemy is emboldened because of that. That is the table that he has set that then under this administration, under the woke policies, that then the woke narratives that has been further, that has been allowed to flourish. The Bible tells us believers in Jesus Christ are to be the light of the world, not to put our lamp under a basket. Matthew 5, 14 through 16. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. The world was underprepared when the coronavirus outbreak occurred. Now experts are working to ensure we are ready if history repeats itself. Avian influenza, or bird flu as it's more commonly known, is spreading worldwide with outbreaks affecting every continent except for Australia and the Antarctic. Some experts believe it's the worst outbreak in history. We've seen these outbreaks happening since the mid 90s. Uh, I don't think we've ever seen it to this extent though. It's extremely widespread and uh, has gone to parts of the world where we've never seen the virus before. Experts are reporting the H5N1 strain of bird flu is responsible for the deaths of over half a billion poultry. 
300 different species of wild bird are also believed to be affected and the death toll projected to be in the millions. We have not seen as many birds die as we have seen really in the last year or so. While the impact on birds and poultry is significant, the recent spread to mammals has experts alarmed. It's a very widespread uh, uh, number of mammals that have been infected, which probably reflects the breadth of the uh, global spread of this virus, that it's so common and it's in so many places. And seeing how easily the virus was able to jump into mammals um, is a bit concerning. But it's an outbreak of the avian-borne virus at a mink farm in Spain that is raising red flags. Program leader and executive director of infectious disease development at Moderna, Rafael Nakbagawa, says there is evidence the disease has evolved to become capable of transmission between mammals. To the extent that it's possible to confirm it by looking back at the sequence data, there is fairly strong evidence that the outbreak that occurred in minks included some mammal-to-mammal -mammal transmission. The reason this type of transmission is so concerning is that it indicates changes or mutations within the virus not seen before. While experts believe human-to-human -human transmission is still a long way off, this avian-borne virus could have the potential to cause the next pandemic. With the outbreak overseas showing no sign of abating and migratory birds due to return toward the end of the year, there is an increased risk the virus could make its way to Australia's shores. Various outbreaks of pandemic diseases, such as the coronavirus, have prompted many to ask why God allows or even causes pandemic diseases and whether such illnesses are a sign of the end times. God brought plagues and diseases on his people and on his enemies to make them see his power, as we read in Exodus 9.14 and verse 16. For at this time, I will send all my plagues to your very heart and on your servants and on your people, that you may know that there is none like me in all the earth. But indeed, for this purpose I have raised you up, that I may show my power in you, and that my name may be declared in all the earth. God destroyed many people for various acts of disobedience, as we read in Numbers 16.46 and verse 49. So Moses said to Aaron, Take a censer and put fire in it from the altar. Put incense on it, and take it quickly to the congregation and make atonement for them. For wrath has gone out from the Lord. The plague has begun. Now those who died in the plague were 14,700, besides those who died in the Korah incident. In the book of Numbers, God disciplines disobedience. Numbers 25, 1-3, and verse 9. Now Israel remained in Acacia Grove, and the people began to commit harlotry with the women of Moab. They invited the people to the sacrifices of their gods, and the people ate and bowed down to their gods. So Israel was joined to Baal of Peor, and the anger of the Lord was aroused against Israel. And those who died in the plague were 24,000. It's sometimes hard to understand why our loving and merciful God would display such anger and wrath toward his people. But remember this, God's punishments always have the goal of repentance and restoration. Second Chronicles 7, 13, and 14. When I shut up heaven, and there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or send pestilence among my people, if my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves, and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and heal their land. In these verses of scripture, we see God using disaster to draw his people to himself, to bring about repentance and the desire to come to him as children to their heavenly father. The spread of viruses, such as the coronavirus, are just a foretaste of pandemics that will be part of the end times. Jesus prophesied of future plagues associated with the last days, as we read in Luke 21:11. And there will be great earthquakes in various places, and famines and pestilences, and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. During the tribulation, the two witnesses will have power to strike the earth with all plagues as often as they desire, as we read in Revelation 11.6. These have power to shut heaven so that no rain falls in the days of their prophecy, and they have power over waters to turn them to blood and to strike the earth with all plagues as often as they desire. During the tribulation, 
seven angels will pour out seven bowls of plagues in a series of final judgments on an unbelieving and unrepentant world. For those who do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, disease should be a reminder that life on this earth is fragile and can be lost at any moment. As bad as pandemics are, for the unsaved, hell will be far worse. The Christian, however, has the assurance of salvation and the hope of eternity because of the blood of Christ shed on the cross for us, as we read in Isaiah 53, 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. God controls the skies and the rain. God controls the wind. God has power over the clouds. God has power over lightning. God is in control of all things, including the weather. Through his providence, God provides for and protects his children. But he also permits Satan, demons, and mankind to exercise their limited will to commit acts of sin, evil, and wickedness. We may not always know why evil acts or natural disasters happen, but we can be assured that God is working all things together for his purpose and for our good, as we read in Romans 8.28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. Good evening and welcome on this Friday as large parts of the country head into a potentially volatile weekend of weather. In the Midwest, eyes are locked on the slow but steady rise of the Mississippi River, a spring snowmelt producing flooding across portions of Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois, Iowa, and Missouri. Scenes like this in Davenport, Iowa, expected to grow worse between now and Monday. But right now, it is the South once again facing the immediate threat of violent and dangerous storms. An estimated 21 million people living in the risk zone tonight. Texas this evening could be hit with large hail, 75 mile per hour winds and tornadoes. And Florida, still recovering from yesterday's damaging storms, could be targeted for another round along the Gulf Coast. God, this is like really bad. Tonight, an unrelenting lineup of vicious spring weather stretches on, from a trail of tornado damage down south to widespread flooding along the mighty Mississippi. I just don't know what the future holds. You know, I'm sure that's what uh, everybody else is thinking. You know, how long and how high are these going to get over the next few years? The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers closing locks and dams from St. Paul to St. Louis, bringing barge traffic to a halt on the upper Mississippi River, melting snowpack, inundating cities like Davenport, Iowa, covering streets downtown. Waters slated to rise until Monday. A local gas company cutting service to 130 homes flooded nearby. Evacuees stuck in hotels. Hopefully it will go down as fast as it came up and we can get in and start cleaning. Down south, destruction is coming from the skies. It blew out some windows. At least seven tornadoes reported across Georgia and Florida overnight. By the light of day, breathtaking wreckage and heartbreak. Throwing away my, stuff, my prize stuff. This alongside pummeling hail and torrential rain. Floods stranding cars in Fort Pierce, Florida. It was so much rain so fast and terrifying moments in Fort Worth, Texas, where two boys struck by lightning this week are now recovering. Apparently I died last night and came back to life. Their mom begging parents to keep their kids safe inside. I know it's like a one in a million chance, but you never know, you might be that one. It was two for me. A plea for caution amid a catastrophic mix of severe weather that just won't let up. It's on the ground. Tonight, severe weather taking direct aim at the Lone Star State. Tornado warnings near Waco. This is a very dangerous storm. It's coming right at us. AccuWeather Extreme Meteorologist Reed Timmer tracking this lowering wall cloud west of the city. That's it. See it, guys? There it is. In Corinth, Mississippi, flames erupting from a gas pipeline before dawn. Officials believe a lightning strike is to blame. The new storm's coming on the heels of a separate system that brought widespread destruction to the Florida Panhandle on Thursday, including an EF2 tornado in Hosford, packing winds of over 125 miles an hour. Meanwhile, in the Midwest, the rising Mississippi River is disrupting the lives of families along its banks. Our Elwin Lopez outside Davenport, Iowa. Major flooding cutting off roads like this one. The only way that residents can get out here is by boat. The local energy company is shutting off gas, leaving people without an answer as to when their services will be restored. And in the West, after record breaking snowfall, record breaking heat. 
is ramping up the flood threat there. Ike Ajaji in Tulare County, California. Take a look. The flooding is well underway, and emergency responders tell me these depths range anywhere from 2 to 20 feet. And with record heat over the next couple of days, officials say it's only going to get worse. So much worse that the National Park Service shut down parts of Yosemite National Park today in anticipation of floods from the Merced River. The park says they'll stay closed until at least next week. This morning, our neighbors in Palm Beach Gardens are waking up to the aftermath of a tornado. The storm's so powerful, it tossed dumpsters and cars, snapped trees, leaving behind a trail of destruction. That's a tornado. Yo, that is a tornado. Holy this is the view Stone Kershaw had from his Palm Beach Gardens apartment as the funnel cloud came closer. Tornado, 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 tornado. Holy shit. Holy shit. There's just a wall of white, just rain. That's all I saw. After it passed, he saw even more jaw dropping images. Light poles ripped from the ground, trees down, his car, and dozens of others badly damaged. His pileup of vehicles just outside his unit. I'm glad to be alive and glad no one's injured and glad we're here to live another day. Oh my God, this is like right in front of it. Oh my God. Caught in the tornado, these cars traveling down PGA Boulevard near US 1. This car going airborne, then crashing down. The facade is now missing on Eagle Cleaners, a dry cleaning business at that intersection, and homes behind it also badly damaged. In this busy residential and business district, many are now shaken. It was crazy. Nothing I ever seen. I come outside and there's there's cars all over the place, branches down, the, the, the ceilings off the roof. It was nuts. Jennifer, a server at Limoncello, says after the staff huddled together in the bathroom, they came outside to find nearly all of their vehicles damaged. Uh, my pal Diego, his car's destroyed, no windows. My friend um, Valentina, no windows, cars on top of each other, bushes down, tree, tree branches down. See that palm tree over there? It's ridiculous. A car rolling over into the middle of the highway. This video taken at US 1 and Pleasant Drive. One of many dramatic videos documenting the Sunday storms. And then you had the car on top of the other car. It was honestly the worst damage I've seen in such a long time. A few miles from the tornado, more severe weather as hailstorms pummeled parts of Jupiter Farms. The biggest hail I've ever seen here. I've, I've lived in Florida all my life and that was the biggest hail I've ever seen. Sarah Havel says what started as pea-sized hail turned into golf ball-sized hail and larger. <laughs> Trees will need to be removed, windows boarded up, power restored. A long road ahead for the people and employees along this corridor. You may have heard the phrase, God's hand of protection. It seems that it is something God would do. Keep a person or nation in the shelter of his hand. It also seems logical to think that in his fierce wrath and anger that he would lift his hand. But is it biblical? Yes, it is. Jeremiah 18, 7 through 10. The instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom, to pluck up, to pull down, and to destroy it, if that nation against whom I have spoken turns from its evil, I will relent of the disaster that I thought to bring upon it. And the instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom, to build and to plant it, if it does evil in my sight so that it does not obey my voice, then I will relent concerning the good with which I said I would benefit it. In the news these days, we read about and see devastating events, each more unusual, destructive, and unprecedented than the last. They are happening more frequently and more intensely, just as the Bible said would happen just before the return of Jesus Christ. It seems as though God has lifted his hand of protection from the United States, and not just the U.S., but the world as well. These devastating events are not accidents, nor are they merely the natural cycle of things. The world is enduring events that are designed to bring about the end of days and cause us to repent. God is lifting his hand of protection from the nations of the world. No, things will never get back to normal. They will only get worse. As the birth pains continue to become more frequent and more intense, one has to wonder, how close are we to the rapture and the seven-year tribulation? 2023 seems to be the year of unusual heat waves in Spain. The country is bracing for an extreme heat event in the coming days. As per reports, some parts of southern and eastern Spain will see temperatures ranging from 36 to 38 degrees Celsius. 
and it is likely to surpass its temperature record for April. More details in our next report. Unseasonable heat is hitting parts of Europe, which came as a surprise to these tourists in Lisbon on Thursday. We do love it, but it's really early and it's really hot. While visitors may be enjoying the sun, the high temperatures are raising fears that wildfires could start early, as they did last year when over 1.9 million acres were destroyed across Europe. That's more than double the annual average for the past 16 years. Adding to the concern, an unusually dry winter that reduced moisture in the soil. France is preparing its wildfire fighting troops and its water carrying aircraft a month earlier than usual. This general inspector of France's civil security said the conditions are a clear sign of climate change. In Spain, residents are living through a drought that has seen 36 consecutive months of below average rainfall. A cistern truck has been delivering drinking water for over a week to about 80,000 people in the country's south. Their local reservoir has dried out and the alternative dam is unsuitable for human consumption. Reservoirs in Spain are at 50 percent of their capacity, with some in the northeastern and southern regions at 25 percent. Residents say they feel helpless and are afraid of what will happen come summer. Psalm 107, 33 and 34. He turns rivers into a wilderness and the water springs into dry ground, a fruitful land into barrenness for the wickedness of those who dwell in it. Thailand is searing. The nation has been gripped by an unprecedented heat wave. Two lives have been lost to the extreme weather already. The heat is so bad in the country that an entire landfall has now caught fire. The blaze raging on for three days now. The fire started at the Ayut Thaya landfill on the 25th of April. Firefighters have been battling the blaze for over three days now. Officials estimate that the landfill fire will need at least four more days to be extinguished. Residents in the vicinity of the landfill are complaining of their eyes burning from the smoke. Authorities estimate over 5,800 households will be impacted. Thailand has recorded some of the highest temperatures it has ever experienced this summer. Towns and cities are reporting a mean temperature of over 40 degrees Celsius. Meteorologists have made this bad news worse. With increased humidity, the heat wave has intensified. The southern island of Phuket is forecasting the heat index to stay at an astonishing 54 degrees Celsius in the coming days. The heat has already claimed two lives. One of the deceased is a traffic policeman who collapsed while on duty. Authorities are warning people across the country to seek shelter and stay indoors. The country's power grid is also at a critical point as air conditioners and fans being operated all day long strain infrastructure. April is the hottest month in Thailand and under normal circumstances the heat dissipates following May. But meteorologists have warned the next few weeks are going to be scorching for the Thai people. Psalm 917 the wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. Now to the war in Ukraine and Russia's newest assault, a wave of cruise missiles and drones killing at least 25 people. A missile slamming into an apartment building in central Ukraine, four children among the dead. And it comes as Ukraine's defense minister says their counteroffensive planning against Russian troops is in its final stage. Russian missile strikes across Ukraine today, setting apartments ablaze, killing innocent people while they slept in their beds in one of the deadliest strikes this year. <laughs> Video circulating online shows the real impact of Russia's attacks on civilians. One woman's apartment shattered by the strike, and just outside, Devastation amid the flames. As dawn broke in the central city of Uman, rescue workers were locked in a desperate race against time after a missile caused apartments to pancake onto one another. More than 20, including at least four children, were killed in this one block alone. Sergei saying, my neighbors are gone, no one's left. And with mounting anger, calling the Russians worse than animals. The more they kill, the more they want to kill, he says, just because we don't want to work for them. In Dnipro, another strike, killing a two-year-old and her mother in their home. 
Other buildings there also hit, going up in flames, leaving little of this warehouse but twisted metal. Race to flee Sudan, a major evacuation of American citizens reportedly underway at this hour in the middle of a fragile truce. ABC's Britt Clenet joins us now from London with the latest. Residents in Sudan's capital now saying they're hearing the roar of fighter jets and boom of artillery fire despite the extension of an already tense ceasefire mediated by the U.S. and Saudi Arabia. This morning, a race against time as the tenuous 72-hour ceasefire in Sudan is closing in. Destroyed streets, dark smoke lining the sky, people desperate to evacuate, including Americans. Countries rushing to evacuate their citizens. This Turkish evacuation plane hit by gunfire as it was landing outside Khartoum. Saudi Arabia evacuating more than 3,000 from Sudan in recent days. These evacuees arriving in Jeddah by ship. The U.S. military evacuating diplomatic personnel last weekend in a daring overnight rescue that included SEAL Team 6. The U.S. veteran-led group Project Dynamo also on the ground trying to help. Their founder, Brian Stern, told us they're fielding hundreds of calls from Americans who are desperate to leave. Those are all registrations are coming in. It's insane. They're now transporting dozens from Khartoum. The group even has a plane at the airport that can't take off because of the fighting. All of this coming as the World Health Organization is warning of the risk of a biological hazard at a laboratory that is in the middle of the fighting in the capital. Well, the ceasefire comes to an end on Sunday night, but as I say, already this morning, reports of heavy bombardment and fierce clashes underway there. Luke 21, 26 through 28. Men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive in faith the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance, but it is one of the results of genuine faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready!
time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.